Hey guys, Riley from Riley's Reptiles here, and I wanted to make a video today uh, to talk about quarantine. Um, recently, with a lot of the talks, shows, and um, conversation about nidovirus uh, in the forefront of what's going on today, I figured this was a relevant and, and hopefully a helpful uh, topic of a video to make for you guys. So uh, I thought I would go through and give you guys a little glimpse of how I handle quarantine, what I do for, for my collection, and uh, what works for me. Now, I'm not going to say that this is the only way to do it. This is the best way. Everybody who does it differently is wrong. Um, there's more than one way to skin a cat, and there's definitely more than one way to operate successful quarantine if you can. There are also people who get away without doing quarantine, and I'm not going to advocate for that, but to each his own, right? So, um, I thought I would take this little bit of inspiration that I'm getting from all these other folks out there and run with it. So, kudos to uh, Brian Cusco, Garrett Hartle, and Eric Burt. Those three dudes right there are really, really taking this video positivity and everything to a new level, and it's, it's inspiring, and here I am. So, here you are with me in my collection small modest little bedroom hobby sort of deal going on right here but uh what happens when i want to bring in a new animal I've, I've got a small room i actually am fortunate enough to um have some enclosures out in a separate room in my apartment and we'll go take a look at those in just a second but everything that comes in here needs to go through a proper quarantine um, ideally 90 days check for any external parasites run fecal samples and just keep them separate and let them you know adjust to the new surroundings new new routine of myself uh, and all this other stuff and just observe what's going on and make sure they're healthy and then once I've gotten uh, negative fecal samples back I'm not seeing external parasites they're eating doing everything I expect out of a healthy animal they graduate into the collection so um, some people like to do longer than 90 days some people have milestones for intervals of when you take fecal samples spread out apart and get them tested do like three uh, negative minimum of three negative results and whatever the timeline is and that's good um, to each his own but ultimately the goal is to make sure you're preserving the health of your existing collection and not bringing something in um, that could be potentially harmful uh, a lot of the times we let some slide, we cut it short, came from a good source, a friend, whatever. And, and we roll the dice a little bit on, on skimping on the quarantine a bit. And we've all been there. I've done it, I'm sure. Um, ideally, that shouldn't happen. But, uh, you know, you learn it the hard way one time and probably never repeat those mistakes again. And fortunately, knock on some wood, I haven't had any issues. But... I'm sure there's plenty of time left to do that. So why don't we go take a look at uh, at my modest quarantine setup. And I'm going to turn you guys around here. But big, uh, big cage for something and some small tanks down here subdivided. Everything on thermostats has its own controller. Um, it's... It's all separate and got to keep your cleaning supplies nearby uh, just in case you never know what you're going to need. But um, disinfection is a big deal with quarantine. So, um, but it's good to have options if you have the space. Not everybody has the space. Uh, some people don't have that luxury. Some people have the luxury of having an entirely separate building on their property. So uh, that would be ideal. Separate building, separate airflow, separate tools, everything. If you can't do that, then you work with what you got. So distance is your first factor. You want to keep your newbies as distant to your current collection as possible. The second thing is you want to um, prevent cross-contamination. So if you clean your collection in this routine, throw your quarantine animal routine onto the end, do it on a separate day. If you have to do it on the same day, do it at the end, change clothes in between, whatever. Um, just be mindful of where your hands are going, what you're bringing into different spaces. Um, always good to have gloves, burn through them, don't be shy about using them. Your animals will thank you later when they're still healthy and alive. Um, gloves are important, 
but you got to use them properly. If I were to go through and put some gloves on and spot clean that cage and that cage and that one without changing them, the gloves are pointless. They're not going to do anything. The point is, it makes it easier to clean something, pull those gloves off, chuck them, put a new pair on, and just keep going down the line. I'll even uh, keep a, a steady supply of hand sanitizer around, always using that stuff, washing my hands in between. So be mindful of that. Um, disinfection, you can use chlorhexidine, you can use bleach, uh, F10, anything you want. Just as long as it's a disinfectant, not a cleaner. Disinfectants are going to do more for you, essentially. Um, you can even switch up your disinfectants regularly or randomly because they cover different things a little bit. So, um, you know, those are some of the things that I've learned in my years working in zoos. Uh, another thing that is really neat, if you have separate spaces or separate facilities, um, foot baths. So we don't think about, you know change your clothes, shower in between, or don't go in there on the same day wearing the same clothes, whatever. But we often forget about our feet. And what you're stepping in, if you're walking from one facility to the next, it comes with you. So foot baths can be as simple as just a black tub, a little, you know, retic sized water dish that you put some sponge and soap and stuff in there and you step on it and you submerge your feet and clean them and in a disinfectant as well, dry them off before you step into that space. That's, that's one thing I don't think most people think of. Um, I always go barefoot in my house, so, uh, maybe I could do better at that, but, uh, for now, my methods are what they are, and I'll probably grow and change, and they'll evolve as I do. So, um, run fecal samples, look for external parasites, disinfect in between every use, disinfect your hooks, your feeding tongs, your water dishes, like have the same water dishes for each animal. If you have separate tools for your quarantine in your collection, do that. Set that up. If you don't and you have to use the same stuff, just disinfect every single time. It might sound tedious, but an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And you will be very glad down the road. Or you'll learn the hard way. But I bet you only learn the hard way once. So, that's my quick approach on quarantine um i hope that was helpful i thought i would try and add to this growing positivity and information sharing and be a positive contributor in that way if there's anything i missed uh relative to quarantine feel free to ask me how i handle that in the comments if you have a similar or a different approach comment below i'd love to see it i'd love to read and hear what you guys do uh, maybe i'll learn something maybe you'll learn something who knows but um figured with my years in zoos um, I'd share a little bit of the extreme level of quarantine that we do there and uh, kind of how I implement that here we got to keep animals healthy we love these animals and we're, we're putting a lot of effort to to acquire them for our collection so why not take a step further and put in a, a lot of effort to keep them healthy it's it's our responsibility to do so so um, quarantine as best you can Feel free to message me, comment, whatever, ask away questions. I'm happy to, to chat and, and uh, answer those as best as I can. Uh, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you know, Subscribe to, to my not-so-frequent YouTube channel. I uh, apologize about that. I'm a little camera shy. But, um, yeah, if there's anything you guys want to see more of, hear more of, something that I didn't cover in this one, or topics that you'd like me to cover in the future, fire away. Let me know. But uh, do your best to keep it positive. Anyway, hope everyone's enjoying themselves, safe, happy, healthy, and your animals are as well. And I will catch you all next time. Cheers.